Hey, Fitzy here, back at it again. I'm here today to show you what do you do when you got a rusty piece like that? You make a new one. Want to see how it's done? Stick around. First thing I got to do is remove this piece here. Now in order to remove that down here, we notice there's rust damage over here. That's up high, so we're going to move this up high and remove the panel. Now I don't want to go getting into this, so I'm going to go up and cut it here somewhere. And cut it in through here and drill out spot wells here and remove this piece and I'll repair this piece off the car. Alright, let's get started. Alright, I decided I was to keep this hole, so I'm going to take it just above that, so I'm going to mark it. I'm going to take a lot of this off in order to do this. So I'm just going to do a rough estimate here now, and I got to mark all the spot wells here. Find out where they're all to. So I can chase them all. For some reason. Some of them I never went right through. I broke off a couple of bits, but get through it. Now I'm going to uh, step up and start drilling them out. I'm not going to go all the way through because I'm only removing this outer layer, so I'm just going to go through hopefully just this top layer. Changed out the bit. Decided to go with a larger drill bit because I was drilling through there and the step drill was too small and I would have to go right through in order to get up to the side so I just changed up the bit. Hopefully I got enough of them broke off. I'm going to cut this off next and uh, try to let it off. I got to cut off, so now I'm going to try to separate two panels. All I'm using is just a, an old chisel that I bought at uh, what you would call Harbor Freight, but up here we have this called Princess Auto. And a hammer. I don't want to use the near chisel on it uh, with the air gun, it'll cut it off because I'm trying to save this panel because I got to repair the bottom of it and reinstall it later. So I'm trying to separate it all there now. This is what we got. I'm going to straighten out a bit. I got this section here now, which is the original quarter panel on the truck. Um, I'm going to have to uh, remove the spot wells and remove this piece off and clean all this up and get it ready to see how much of it I'm going to replace. So the first thing I'm going to do now is uh, dolly this up and get this straightened up. That's a lot better there now. What I'm going to do now is clean this off and see if I can find where the spot welds are to. Now I got it cleaned up 
and you can see there's a spot well here, spot well here, possibly one here somewhere, and another one here, another one here, and down through here. I got them marked out. Now, in most cases, a lot of people will take these down and drill these out to remove this piece. The problem I don't like with doing that is when you drill these out, you're left with a hole on the back side. So when you put your new panel on over it, uh, you got holes. So you're going to end up having to go back and weld them up because it's very... You're not going to be able to weld these back here when it's on the vehicle. So what I like to do, I like to grind and weaken the welds and then try to take them off that way. I'll cut through the middle here. I'll show you now. I found a few more spot wells, I had to grind them off as well, but you can see that's like that. And now you're left with this up here, see? You got no holes to deal with. I'll just clean all this up now yeah? and get ready for the next day. cleaned up. All I cleaned it up with was uh, that's a 36 grit and uh, I usually like 24s but all I got here is 36. 36 on that and I use a bar grinder. As I was cleaning it up I come across this here. This was uh, pretty bad so I'm going to have to make a new one of them so I ended up drilling that out. Taking that off. We'll share that later. But she's pretty good up there. Nothing too serious up there but down here now all this here is going to have to be replaced. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this off and make this entire section down here and just have a salt weld straight onto the end of it there. Alright, I went and cut that off. i got the piece here now I'm going to work. I'm going to take that here now and put that away. So I'm going to work on that. Another piece I got that for later. Now, i got this piece here. Now you can probably play around with this and work this and make this all on one piece if you got tools, the bead roller or whatnot, but I'm going to make this with simple tools. I'm going to make this with, in two sections, reason for being, every time you end up with a panel that got a rotation like that, but it also got this turn on it like this, um, I'm going to make a join through here. I always find that when you've got a rolled edge on a con contour panel, it's always best to, to hit it in the middle of the roll. So you, you put an edge right along there and that way you'll get the roll that way and you'll get both shapes. And I'll make this piece in one piece and then I'll make all this in the other piece, right? So I just went out, I got a piece of tin. Right here, just picked it out and just cut it off. They're not fancy. I don't use templates or anything. That's just so it's the right length. It folds over and I'm going to do it from that. And I'm going to take that now and I'm going to clean it up and get it ready for uh, to make the bend and everything on it get it prepped. Alright, got that all cleaned up. So now I'm going to measure this here and put the bend on it. We have two and three eighths of an inch. So I'm going to mark that. Two and three eighths of an inch. And I'll go over in the bender now and put that in the 90.
All right, I got that bent, as you can see. Nice angle and everything on it. Now what I'm going to do is, I notice that this comes along here. So I'm going to mark this, right where it ends here. Mark that there, that's the bottom of the roll. And then I'm going to turn around and mark it over here, where the bottom of the roll is too. Right? And get a rough idea in through here, where that is too. So I got three points there, like so, that I'm just going to mark. Just doing it roughly. It never gets carried away when it does this work. Right, so I'll basically, all right, so that goes more like this now. That can turn here on the end. Come uh, straight out. Another thing with that though. Anyway, that's roughly it there. Where the end it goes. Now I know that's the flat part. That'll stay there. This here is going to have to be cut off down here. Right? Uh, and now next thing I gotta leave enough there for the roll to come up on this side here. So that's roughly about three quarters of an inch. So all I'll do is I'll just come up here and I'll mark this roughly three quarters of an inch all the way around, like so. But I'll cut that straight in through there. This here I'll roll up. <clears throat> Alright, so now I gotta cut this section here, I'm gonna cut this all out and remove it and then all I'm left to is that. I'll go cut that out now. I got that all cut out. As you can see, I done it all with an electric grinder. It's just something I picked up over the years. Uh, I do things a lot faster. I don't use tin snips on anything anymore. Very rarely. Uh, I do all my cutting with that. I do hard, rough corners um, <clears throat> in two sections. I won't try to make the whole turn. I'll cut it, cut it off, and cut some more, and cut it off, cut it some more, and cut it off. I just find it faster. That's the only reason why I do it. Anyway, so now what I got to do is I got to roll this edge. I gotta roll this up now so we can get that to look like this section here. So and there's a nice curved edge on the bottom, so I'm gonna rig up something in the voice there now and bend that. All I got done is I got a dolly clamped into the voice. Uh, and it's got a curved edge on it right here. I'm gonna take a hammer now and I'm gonna mark that around there. Give me a rough idea. Where it goes. Yeah, okay, and that side line. So I got something to follow. Now I'll do is I'll just start hammering over the edge. You gotta be patient with it. it. Puts up a fight, but you'll get it. You'll get it close. You're getting close, see? And we're all edged up. Yeah, that's a better one there. Now I gotta straighten that edge there now. There, 
that's not bad or so. Up on that end. Okay. I'll have to work this corner down here a bit better. One right there, that'll have to be worked a bit better. But I'll do that when I start making the top piece. So that's the first piece I got made. So I'll lay that aside. And we'll move on and make this section now. I'm just going to cut a piece this size, make it a little bit bigger, and then I'm going to put this edge in it. I'll show you how I does that. Some people will be out making templates. Uh, I got no patience for <laughs> rough it in, make it always make your piece, cut your piece bigger, and you can always trim it down as you're going. Uh, I find if you make them the exact size, when you start doing metal work and everything on moving around, you'll end up losing length or width on the piece. And you, then you're trying to add stuff to it and everything. By making the piece bigger, you can uh, always take stuff away from it. Now I got the piece cut out, and it's roughly cut out. I can lay this on over my original piece and put it where it has to go and decide, okay, well, I gotta take a bit more out of the bottom. Down the bottom side here, as you can see here. Top seems pretty good, but I can trim all that up there now. So I'll trim that up and get this all dressed up. Alright, all I got done is I got this marked here. This is the high section of it, and this section here got to be lowered this way. All I ever do for this, I do this technique a lot on little small panels and stuff like that. But right here is where I got to drop this down. All I do is I take it and I clamp it in a vise. Like so. And I got this flat piece of steel, just something I made up. The ends of it is rounded off. Sometimes I use it for a chisel, but I got it rounded off just for this job. And all I do is I put that right on that edge there, right on the vise, and I hit it. This is what you come up with. This little raised edge, no? And I'll do that now right along this whole, the whole entire edge, and I'll just move it through the voice as I'm going, just take a little section at a time and work it through. I'm going to do that now.
And there you have it. Nice little relieved edge on it. All's made, just made in a voice, with a piece of flat bar and a hammer. Here's the original piece. How it fits together like that, I got it all trimmed up. Yeah, fits pretty good there. Up on the top edge, it overlaps. You see the edge on it? I'll take the new piece now. And you can see now that when I put that down the bottom there and lines that up on the top, I got a bit of shaping to do. But I'm going to go shape this now to finish it off before it goes well enough together and get it all fitting, right? And I'll get that done now and I'll get ready to weld that up. And to massage this a bit and roll it a bit more, but I got it there now. I'm ready now to weld this all together. I'll start welding that. I'll weld it all. Tack weld it all together. Weld it all on the inside and all on the outside like I've done in previous videos. And then I'll make this side here look original. So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, start tacking weld that together. Tack weld in place. I'm going to go in now and I'll weld the back side of this, weld all this solid, and then I'm going to dress it all up. But I'm going to go get all that welded up now. So there it is, welded up inside and out. Let that cool down now and I start grinding it up. pieces there now. I weld it onto that there now. Make that one piece. Go do that now. Here it is, all one piece again.
See the back side? You can see where it's joined. I always like to try to weld back sides if everything gives it strength and you can really dress the fronts of them up. But you can see the way everything now flows into each other again. This sharp cornered edge. So that's ready to install. I'm going to end this one here. Um, I hope it was uh, helpful. You got some ideas from it and you can see you get some ideas in your own projects. And uh, until next time.